Hello and welcome to Smash Writing. Today we are going back to, I believe, May. I'm talking about Tarot by Spencer Cohen and Anna Halberg. I floated around the idea of going to see this movie because, uh, just to see how bad it probably was. It, it didn't look good in the trailer, it wasn't really selling me. But there was that, that small little part of me that wanted to go see it. Maybe it wouldn't have been so bad. Maybe there would have been fun things to it. Now that it's done, oh, I'm actually kind of disappointed. I did try to find my tarot cards. I, I can't find them. I don't know where I put them. Not that I believe in them. I, I really love tarot artwork. I love the cards. But with that said, um, let's dive in and talk about tarot, shall we? Uh, this movie kicks off with six friends sitting around a campfire. They're celebrating their friend Elise's, Elise's birthday party. Playing a little game of uh, who's who will be the first to what. And the person who wins takes a drink. It's all fun and games until it lands on Haley and Grant as the ones they believe are going to be the first two married. Unbeknownst to them, they'd broken up before they came up on the trip. And there seems to be a little bit of division on just why she says he's not ambitious enough. He says he's too ambitious. But this is all broken up and they realize there's only one beer left and they must go find more beer in the rental house. Which leads them into a um, room they're allowed to be in. They find a whole bunch of antiques and Paxton spots a box with some tarot cards in it. Luckily Haley knows about tarot, but she doesn't really want to read them. It's bad luck to read someone else's cards, but Elise pulls the birthday card and Haley agrees to do the tarot wishes. I will run through them quickly. Elise is warned to slow down and avoid crushing blows and a ladder to success. Madeline is warned to be on tech failures and uh, water under the bridge. Fight the urge to run. Paige pulled in two directions. Be careful, you know. Uh, that prevents her from seeing clearly. Grant takes a pass at first. Baxton don't act on impulse, trapped in a box of sending numbers. But he'll also be there to show up for his friends at an unexpected time. Grant now changes his mind though he wants to do it and then he gets all pissy because he thinks the reading is about him and um, she does tell him avoid long dark roads and you're gonna have to face your demons. But he goads her into reading her own cards and as she says, like everything, every time else Love will be the death of her. At this point, we jump the night, the box glows a bit, title card time. And now they're heading back to campus. Along the way, though, oh, I forgot about Capricorn. Uh, Capricorn is warned not to run toward the light. All right, on the way back, Capricorn stops up and wins $700 on his scratch off card, which is told in his tarot card reading. So there's some happiness there, and they get home. And Elise is the first one to bite it when they she spots her uh, tarot card come to life and smash her with a ladder. So everyone's obviously distraught over this. Uh, Haley stays the night with Paige to keep her company because that was her girlfriend. And we learned that uh, Haley got into tarot cards when her mom got real sick. And she kept reading the cards hoping it would change but it kept telling her that her mom would survive and her mom did not survive. And she still wears the medical bracelet on her arm as a reminder. Uh, meanwhile, while they're doing that, Capricorn takes their other friend home, and he is off, and he's chased, uh, he's scared down, ignoring everything until it's too late, and he's scared in front of a subway train. So now everyone's starting to get a little suspicious on this one. And uh, Paxton puts out the idea that maybe someone is killing them. And, um, hell, Paige thinks it's accidents. Haley is the one who pitches the tarot cards are killing them. Uh, everyone except for Grant is on board. He's not. They look it up online. They find this woman. I knew her name was like Ashram. And she knows a little bit about this. She'd been a part of tarot readings that had killed all the people before. Grant is debunking her behind them, but they're not listening to him, and they go off to see this woman. And she tells them all about these cards. This is not the first time. It goes back many years, and it's always the hand, same tarot deck. And she tells him the story going back to Hungary in 1798 of a count and a countess. And the count was big into the occult. 
and he always got his cards read, and when she became pregnant, he insisted on the reading. Uh, the tarot reader kept giving him bad news that the wife and the son were going to die during childbirth. And when she couldn't change the outcome of that, he kicked her and her daughter out, and sure enough, they both died during childbirth. So they hunted them down, and they found the daughter and killed the daughter for eye for an eye. So the tarot card reader, the astrologer, 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 cursed the cards. She did a reading for the Count and all of his men, and then took herself out, binding her soul with the cards, and putting a death curse on the people she read for, and the cards themselves. And now anyone who reads the cards, anyone who does a reading for it, they'll die. And obviously this is bad news for our protagonist, because even Haley read her own cards. And this Ashram woman knows about this because she read for her own party, but she didn't read for herself. And she tells them, the only way to survive this is to take out the cards, destroy the cards. So they head off, and Grant's still not on this, until this car breaks down. And they're on top of a bridge with water underneath of it. It's looking like Madeline, I believe her name is, is next. And sure enough, despite the warning, she runs. And she gets hanged. And now everyone except for Paxton is on board because he has changed his mind. So he storms off to go barricade himself in his dorm. And they're going to head up to try to burn the cards. Paxton gets to his apartment in an elevator. So he's now in a box, ascending numbers, and falls on him. And just as the fool is breaking into the elevator, we cut away to the people showing up at the house. And... They try to burn the cards, but the cards won't catch fire, so they call in for help. And Ashram shows up, and Ashram's put together this little ritual to separate the astrologer from her cards. She calls her a couple times, and the astrologer arrives and reads Ashram's tarot cards and kills her immediately. And the other three run, but Paige gets separated and runs into the magician, who saws her in half. So now it's down to Haley and Grant, and Haley confesses to him that she's read the tarot cards twice when it comes to their relationship, and both times it said they shouldn't be together. Kind of hinting that that's why she broke up with him, but she said that the second reading was weeks before they broke up. So I'm not sure if that was the reason. The reasoning is very flawed. But it does give her an idea. If they can read the astrologer's card, then it'll take her out too, before them, and ending the curse. Just as she's pitching this idea, Grant is chucked out the window by the devil, and then the devil becomes death. Because that's what always comes up for her. Death. And she tries to make it, but death intercepts her. But Grant fights him off and buys her time to go start the reading. And it does save Grant, because now... The astrologer has to teleport over to her and deal with her, but it's too late, and she's whisked away in black clouds. The two are walking home. I don't know why they didn't take the car, maybe because they can't find Paige. And sure enough, Paxton arrives, just as the card said. And I, he'll be there for his friends at the unexpected moment. He survived the elevator because his roommate Todd showed up and scared off the full kind of deal. And that is the end of tarot. I hate starting this with questions because I didn't like the fact that I did that before. How did she read the astrologer's cards without knowing the astrologer's birthday? Because it's all about, it's not like a regular reading. They're basing it off of horoscopes. They specifically said she comes for horoscope readings, kind of, when you tie the, the horoscopes with tarot cards. It's like you can do other versions of tarot readings, I guess, but they're doing it with the horoscope. But she doesn't know the astrologer's birthday or anything, so we just did a random read based on the cards. I think you get a lot of shit with this. Let's talk about it. Um, why did... See, I, I get the what you're doing here. Like, the cards tell you your death. And then the cards come to make sure that you die. But why do they give you warnings? Like, they gave Capricorn a warning to not follow the light. So he could have survived if he would have ran any other direction. 
but at the same time, not really, because these monsters can actually physically grab you. They can physically interact with their area, because you saw that with the hangman and the magician. And death and the devil both grab them, grab me, grab the people. So why would they give you a warning, like things to look out for? Is it coincidental that they're doing this? Is it just random, like no, you really can't survive, but they all give you a warning to know how to survive the situation? So I don't know why they would include a warning like that in this movie. It doesn't feel like for a death curse set, you don't have a chance to survive. You, there's a whole lot of ways they could have survived if they would have just pay, heeded the warning of the cards. And I do want to say, um, it, it irritated me especially, especially me being one. Capricorns aren't real rule breakers. They're, they're not, I, I even googled just to make sure I wasn't wrong on that and like, no. Capricorns are sticklers to rules and they're sometimes even their own made up rules. To the point where we're hard as fuck to deal with. You could have, like, they're stubborn. They're bulldog stubborn, but you went with the stubbornness of the Aquarius. So you couldn't double that up, so you just pulled out a rule breaker one, which I'm not in. Just little things like that, like the death card. Not sure it is the start of something new, but it's more of the ending. Something will be ending here soon. Not so much starting of something new, but the ending of something. Uh, Grant and Haley's relationship really didn't work here, though, Woes. You don't even know why they broke up. Like, they, they gave you that tarot card reading thing as a possible reason for why she broke up with him. But the timeline really doesn't fit that, because it wasn't, like she said, the night before or the day before their breakup. That it was a week or two before the breakup. And then they don't really got good chemistry together, either. And he's like, oh, I looked it up. And it's like, How, when? When did you look it up? You were either driving the car or running. Their relationship could have been hammed out a lot better. The monsters in this movie, fantastic. From what I saw on a few little sites, that this was all practically done. They all looked amazing. Trevor Henderson did a lovely job making them scary as hell. And bravos to him for doing that because they really saved this movie. They did some hard carrying like, yeah, it's almost, you almost should watch this movie just to see his monsters come to life. And with that note, too, I even really like the tarot deck. Those tarot cards from this movie, they look nice, too. Real smooth, real neat. I like that uh, old-school hand-painted look on the cards. That's very nice. Uh, the pacing of this movie, it, it flows really well. They don't really joke around. You're like 10 minutes in, you're getting the tarot readings. And 14 minutes after that, Elise is being taken up by a ladder. This movie moves quick and the pacing is really nice for the movie that they're making here. I thought all the actors and actresses, they did the best job that they could with the material they had. The writing was not great. The uh, dialogue could have been hammed out a lot better. I didn't really care about the relationship between Grant and Haley. You could have worked out these card rituals a little bit better. But none of that, I think, falls on the heads of the actors. I want to finish this out by talking about something, and I talk about this a lot. I know this can be a divisive issue when it comes to these this genre. But stay with me, because I'm not just going to say it. I'm going to describe you something here. When you have movies back in the 80s that people fawn over, it's not just the big three. Like, the big three, we're going to ignore them for a moment, because they have a lot more going for them. But when you have movies that people talk about all the time, like Slumber, Slumber Party Massacre, Sleepaway Camp, uh, The Prowler, we recently did a review on The Prowler. Actually, that should be coming out next week, actually. Or this week. Next week, next weekend. You're dead but there are movies that have weak premises. I know a lot more from the 80s. There are movies that have weak premises. And not the, not the best quality of writing. But they're remembered fondly for one reason. Carnage candy. The blood and the gore and the grisly death sequences. Tarot and movies like that, but especially tarot, because these monsters, they had it. They had the monsters. And the actors in this movie had enough skill to pull it off. But if you would have went real heavy on the carnage candy in this movie, give us some real good death sequences. Even if like even like the old movies that cut away just before the real gruesome ones. We still saw the results of it whenever their bodies were found. Tarot is a movie that's designed 
with the need for Carnage King. If you would have worked up the blood, this movie would be so good and people would be fawning over it. Because it's a movie designed to give you those grisly deaths. A creative idea, some cool monsters, and some blood. What it carried. And I'm saying this knowing that this movie succeeded. As bad as this is, as negative all these reviews are, as like more negative for me than I like doing. This movie succeeded. It made $49 million on $8 million budget. Yeah, are you kidding? It fucking killed. Like five times its budget. No, over five times its fucking budget. Six times its budget, really. But whatever, you know, math. The movie succeeded for all of its faults. But I do think if um, you added the blood and added the gruesome death sequences, people would be talking about this movie more highly than what it is. And for what it is, I gotta give it a C minus. I know that's a little high for all the negatives that I talked about. But the monsters look great. I like the tarot's. The people were fine despite the uh, bad writing. And with that, that's all I have. So as so have a good day, evening, night, afternoon, whatever, wherever you are. And as always, bye bye.